What up y'all, Summer here. Today I'm gonna show you how to convert a wine fridge into an incubator. It was a pretty easy, simple process. This was my first time doing this and I was honestly a little surprised by how simple it was, how easy it was. I was a bit intimidated by it at first and I love making things, but I was still a little intimidated by it, but it came out great. I'm gonna show you the steps that I took in converting this guy into an incubator. Let's get it. So far, what I've done, I took off the back panel, which was super easy. There were a series of screws. I just took those guys out uh, and took off the back panel. The next thing I did was I disconnected this motherboard and then I disconnected the fan that was down here. I am winging it. As I go, I see what needs to be done and I'm taking the next logical step. Every fridge that you may try to convert will be a bit different this fridge does not seem to have a condenser at all i think that these metal parts here are the cooling elements uh, so i decided i'm going to go ahead and take off these cooling elements on the other side of this is a fan i really want to keep that fan and work with that fan i'm pretty sure that this guy just has a blown fuse uh, so i may attempt to uh, replace this fuse so that way I can still use the internal thermostat that's already a part of this system but take out the cooling units uh, and just use the original power source to run the fans etc etc. Removing these cooling units were pretty simple. It was held on by two screws. I went and removed those two screws and the whole thing popped out. I went ahead and cut the wires away from the motherboard and then that allowed me to completely disconnect them. I did the same thing for the second cooling unit as well and then I was done with that process. I reattached the motherboard uh, once I had everything pulled off that I needed. It made the process really simple. So the next step I'm going to do, I've removed what i'm pretty sure were the cooling units these guys right here there's fans here that i think i can clean up and reuse for other purposes so i'm excited about that i'm gonna go ahead and plug it in and see what happens let's do it Okay, so it made a weird buzzing sound. I don't know what that was about. Um, I think I'm gonna need to solder over those power lines that were coming out into those condensers uh, just to make sure that there's not just like raw power coming out, but the fans are functioning, which is exactly what I wanted to happen. Let's go see if the thermostat is reading. Oh, yes. And the thermostat is working. This is very excited. And the light inside works. This is awesome. So uh, all the things that I want to work on this thing are working. That is very, very exciting. Uh, the next thing I need to do is add in the heating elements. Yeah. I went to Home Depot and grabbed these guys. I'm gonna use this to attach the heating cable inside of the future incubator. Let's do it. I'm working with Zoomed's heating cable. It's about 39 feet long, and I am estimating that this is going to be the perfect length to complete this project. Right now, I'm going around and coiling it around the bottom. My goal is to have heat in multiple areas of this incubator so that it is evenly distributed throughout. I'm going around wrapping it using these uh, wire holders to connect it to the bottom. This wire, um, from what I've read about it, will not melt or burn plastic, so it should be safe to hold it down using these wire connectors. So I go and I coil it around the unit. Um, I finish up with the bottom and I start running it up the back Back side of it uh, really making sure that I'm trying to I'm really trying to make sure I'm being mindful about the placement of this uh, and that I'm making sure the heat is going to go around the unit in the ways that I want to keeping in mind that this is my first time building one of these so I'm hoping that all of my theoretical ideas of how this should work will work out well 
I could have gone with a regular heat tape, um, but I felt that this was going to one, give me a cleaner look and two, allow me to really control the ways that my heat was distributed throughout the space a little bit better. Uh, I went through and estimated how much length I had left uh, to make sure that I really could do it in the way that I had planned. Um, from what I could tell, I do have enough wire to do it the way that I intended. So I made my way around, uh, continuing to connect it, uh, making my way over to the other side of the space, coiling the wire. Uh, this stuff was really, really pliable. So it made it easy to work with. I expected it to be a bit stiffer than it is. Um, and I was pleasantly surprised by how flexible this wire is. Um, it made it a lot easier to really bend it around the space the way that I plan to. Yeah, so I make my way down. Uh, right now I have probably about 80% of the wires in place. Um, and then I start coiling it around the back area. I really wanted to have like a nice concentrated area of heat coming from the center of the space. That's why I coiled it around like this. Um, getting everything in place the way that I want it to be. Very excited to test this out and see how it works. This is really much easier than I expected it to be. Once I had the wires in place, I went ahead and put in a few more attachments and then started working on adding in the probes. So I'm working with a simple uh, temperature control unit um, I went ahead and slid in the probes, um, started to put in the shelves in place, and started working with the placement of this. Right now, I'm contemplating the best way to arrange these wires. Uh, I am winging it as I go, as I already mentioned. I decided to work with Velcro to attach it so that I can take it off if I need it to. Um, was really happy with the placement of that. Went ahead and got the probes in place and pulled in the extra bit of wire. Now, I was going to have all of this wire tucked inside the back of the unit, but I decided if I have it, I want to go ahead and use as much of the heating wire as I can. Um, I don't want to waste any of that heat that could potentially be contributing to um, the space being the temperatures that I want it to be. So I went ahead and coiled it up and tucked it in the back of the unit and then added in my shelves, made sure my probes were in place. And I was ready to start working with organizing my wires, making sure all my wires were nice and organized, it was important. Uh, I went ahead and used a sheet of PVC to cover the holes on the back of the fan. This was gonna make sure that no excess heat was escaping. Uh, that was very important. And I went ahead and put the back panel back on uh, using all the original screws. I also went ahead and bended this space to make it a little bit wider before there was only one wire coming through. So I wanted to make sure all my wires could fit the way that I needed them to. Secured it all back in place. And yeah, it's good to go. So this is my incubator. So I was able to maintain the internal thermostat that's already a part of the system. So it's giving me a reading that's pretty close to what the probes are giving me. Right now it's at 83. I have my temperatures set at 85 um, to test it out. And then over here, this is my uh, thermostat or my, what should I call this? The temperature control unit, I guess. So right now it's on and regulating uh, the temperatures. Um, it's saying that the temperatures are at 86. Actually, I'm still learning what the two different numbers on this guy means, but it's doing its job regulating the temperatures. Uh, I touched the coils on the inside. We open it up. So all of the heat cables are wounded around inside of here. I touched them and they are nice and warm emitting heat. I was able to keep the original fans that were a part of this unit. So it is circulating air. I am so happy with how this turned out. I'm so happy with how this came out. I 
was able to maintain a lot of the functions that I wanted to and I wasn't really sure if it was going to work out that way like little things like being able to keep the light inside is very cool now it's going to take me a while to calibrate it to really get the settings the way that I want them to for instance I have the temperature right now set at 85 for an alarm to go off at 90 and for an alarm to go off at 80 it's also set to kick on and off on at 82 off at 85 and right now the temperatures are definitely getting outside of that range the highest that it's hit according to the probes is 90 the highest that the temperatures have hit according to this guy is about 88 so this thermostat and that thermostat are pretty closely aligned but i'm gonna have to work with the temperatures so that they are hitting where i want them to be which will be perfect temperatures for both chameleon eggs and bearded dragon eggs that's what i got for today i'm signing off uh please if you like the video, go ahead and hit that like button, hit subscribe. I'm going to be putting out all kinds of awesome content about reptiles, about breeding them, about caring for them, about uh, ethical whatever, what have you. There's going to be lots of good information coming out on this channel. And just also looking at spending time with all kinds of very, very cool reptiles and very cool people. So yeah, that's what I got. I'm out of here. I love it. I love this thing. All right, bye. <laughs>